hello everybody. My name is uh, Val. I am a Cardano stake pool operator for stake pool Lega, and this is the monthly uh, delegators call on March 3rd, uh, 2022. Uh, we have a few topics to cover today. We'll talk about um, some current events as well as what's happening in the cryptocurrency market. I have um, a slide deck with about 35 slides. So this will take uh, about 40 minutes, depending on how many, 40 minutes to an hour, depending on how many questions get asked. Um, so I'll start uh, the slide deck and um, here we go. So this is uh, me with my buddy, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, who some of you may know. He's the mayor of Kiev and right now he is um, uh, defending his uh, city from, um, <clears throat> Russian troops they're trying to, to encircle and take it over. So uh, without taking sides or political um, expressions, I'll just wish him well and I hope that he makes it out alive. Uh, very cool guy. Uh, great boxer. Um, good mayor. Very good mayor. So I hope, he, I hope he makes it and I wish him well. And that's me with him. So you know what I look like. Uh, so the topics for today... Uh, we'll talk about uh, inflation, quantitative uh, easing and tapering, uh, war in Europe and uh, effect on crypto. Uh, we'll talk about Bitcoin and the current uh, uh, market and recent movements and changes in the cryptocurrency space. Um, the role of uh, crypto in uh, the atmosphere of san sanctions. Uh, and uh, there are quite a few developments in February in the crypto news, so I have some uh, topics to cover in that. Uh, and then we have our regular uh, sections, um, a little bit about Bitcoin uh, and uh, the current Bitcoin supply and rewards. Uh, uh, and then uh, the section on Cardano, uh, how to buy Cardano, how to stake, uh, how much uh, you can make in rewards and uh, the performance of uh, our pool in the past six epochs or the, the past month. Uh, and outlook for Cardano for the uh, coming months uh, and uh, 2022. We'll talk about what's in development and what's being built uh, on Cardano. And uh, we'll go over some uh, economics numbers and usage metrics on the Cardano blockchain and I'll um, answer questions. So anytime that you have a question or you want to ask something, there is a, uh, you can put a question in the chat or raise your hand and then I'll see it and I will stop um and answer the question or if i need to go back on the slide uh, so uh, first uh, some of the news uh, and events that happened in february uh, russia leg legalized crypto exchanges uh, and allowed banks to uh, hold and uh, buy and sell crypto uh, well then you know what happened on uh, in, on february 24th uh, Ukraine uh, made Bitcoin leg legal tender, uh, and they, um, as the war started, they uh, there are several um, entities that are co collecting donations for humanitarian efforts and some for supplies for the troops. And so far, they've raised. Yesterday it was like 20 million dollars when I was making this slide, but today I was just reading it's over 30 million dollars in donations. Um, State Street, BlackRock, BNY Mellon um, have um, announced that they will provide crypto custody and trading services. And that's pretty big because uh, BlackRock is uh, uh, one of the largest and maybe the largest financial firms in the United States. Uh, State Street as well is pretty big. Well, all three are big, but BlackRock is probably the largest. Um, U.S. Congress rejects Treasury's guidelines and stable coin regulation. Uh, there is also a bill in Congress that would prohibit um, the federal government from issuing uh, a stable coin or um, a central bank digital currency. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, Treasury uh, promises U.S. senators that they will leave uh, crypto miners, uh, stakers and developers from any regulation. So that's that's good for us. Uh, BlockFi, who was sued by several states and the SEC uh, for uh unregistered loan products offerings uh they've settled with the sec and the states that were suing them for 100 million dollars 
Uh, KPMG Canada, uh, that's one of the big three uh, accounting consulting firms, uh, added Bitcoin and, and Ethereum to its corporate balance sheet. So they uh, want more uh, corporate um, large company now that, that holds uh, their treasury and Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I think that that's huge. Uh, Twitter added Ethereum uh, as a tipping um, currency. So you can now uh, tip uh, on Twitter with ETH and iPhone, um, Apple iPhone added tap to pay uh, through uh, Visa and MasterCard uh, payments that uh, route uh, crypto payments. So you can use one of the like crypto.com credit card uh, to pay with tap to pay uh, using your iPhone. Uh, MicroStrategy buys um, $25 million worth of Bitcoin at an average price of 37862 So Michael Saylor, God bless your soul, he's still going. Uh, Luna Foundation raised $1 billion USD uh, to create a reserve for Luna uh, USD stablecoin. Um, so there was some news about a month ago that they were running short uh, because people were selling uh, and uh, they needed backing, so they got a one billion USD in uh, cash to back the USD stablecoin. So you may, uh, after this news came out, you might have seen Luna went up by about sixty percent uh, um, in price over the past week. So good for them. Uh, Binance uh, takes a twenty billion stake in Forbes. So uh, Binance bought uh, interest in the Forbes magazine, which I think is huge because it's going to help them. Uh, bring the stories of crypto to the masses. Uh, Forbes is a huge uh, news outlet, so uh, Binance taking a stake, so it will probably help with education and positive crypto news, uh, and we need some. Uh, there was a Solana wormhole bridge where $320 million worth of crypto was hacked, and um, UMP uh, trading uh, filled uh, that loss. So the, the investors were paid back, but just the, the sheer magnitude is pretty um, pretty high. Uh, ConocoPhillips take a stake in back on shale Bitcoin mining project. So ConocoPhillips is a, is a huge energy company and now uh, they're joining uh, those who are mining Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, uh, Verity, which is a digital uh, identity platform, um, got support from Circle, Block, Coinbase, MetaMask, Phantom, and Solana. So um, that's probably uh, a good thing because uh, identity will become more important and Cardano has um, its own identity um, component called a PRISM. So identity will be important. Um, now, if, uh, this was interesting. This is, um, I'll talk a little bit about sanctions and what's happening with the war in Ukraine. Uh, Mikhailo uh, Fedorov, uh, he is the finance minister of, of uh, Ukraine. He asked uh, major crypto exchanges to block uh, addresses of Russian users, and he got a response from Coinbase and Binance. Uh, um, the response from Binance was to unilaterally decide to ban people's access to their crypto would fly in the face of the reason why crypto exists. So they basically gave him a middle finger and said, this is not what we stand for. Um, and um, uh, from Kraken, uh, the response was, I understand the rationale behind this request, but despite my deep respect for the Ukrainian people, uh, Kraken cannot freeze accounts of our Russian customers without a legal requirement to do so. So the, the legal requirement would be the Russian government telling them you can no longer operate in our jurisdiction. But just because somebody from outside from another country says, you know, freeze all Russian accounts, that, that's not something that uh, the cryptocurrency exchanges can do. And that's a good thing uh, because today they can demand Russian accounts to be frozen and tomorrow they can demand somebody from another country for some other reason. Um, so I think this is great. And last time in February, uh, when we met, we spoke about uh, the Canadian trackers who were receiving donations in Bitcoin and the Canadian government went to um, wallet manufacturers asking them to freeze access to Bitcoin funds. And they said, well, we, we don't control wallets. They're like out there and they're free. So there is no way to do that. But uh, about uh, sanctions and the, the overall impact on crypto, 
Uh, right now, um, it's become, I would say, um, modern um, and uh, a hip to impose uh, sanctions on Russia. So, so, so far, US, Canada, a number of European countries, Japan and Australia are imposing um, sanctions on Russia and that includes limiting uh, SWIFT transfers, a number of uh, uh, manufacturers, um, car manufacturers and companies like IKEA, uh, Ford, all the fashion brands, they're all living Russia, the, the European and American ones. But um, surprise, as some have been surprised, uh, other countries like Mexico, Brazil, India and China um, refuse to um, push sanctions on Russia. So we'll, we'll see how that ends. I'm personally against any escalation because I don't think we need any. And um, nobody knows where this will end. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm against the war. Hopefully, it can stop soon and they can make some kind of a deal. But um, next, um, some news on the US money supply. Uh, the printing uh, is accelerating. So our M1 and M2 money supply currently stands at uh, 19 and a half trillion. So that's all cash and all uh, checking and savings account balances um, in dominated in US dollars. So that's hitting, uh, you know, we were at about 15, uh, 14, 15 trillion before the pandemic, and now we've gone up to 19 and a half trillion. So um, money printing and, and the war, I'm sure will cause in Ukraine, will cause more money printing because there will be additional budget items that the US government will be spending money on. So that will accelerate. Um, inflation. So this came out and this was from uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. And um, they're saying that even though now inflation hit um, seven and a half percent, they're forecasting that uh, by mid 2022 is going to go uh, below five percent. And I personally have a hard time believing that because in the um, atmosphere of sanctions, uh, gas is going to become more expensive, uh, oil uh, and natural gas uh, will also become more expensive as Russia will have a hard time getting paid for their oil and gas. Um, and I have some numbers on that, but uh, I think that this is more of uh, trying to calm the public, but I, I'm not buying this, even though the, this comes from the US government, they're trying to calm people down, but um, we'll, we'll discuss this uh, a bit uh, more in the, uh, further slides. Then uh, quantitative uh, easing and tapering. So there've been a lot of talk about uh, quantitative easing and tapering. So quantitative easing is a concept that came out of the financial crisis. It's basically US government printing or creating money uh, to purchase uh, bonds on the commercial market. Uh, so um, it, we're now the US government is approaching nine trillion dollars in assets that they own and those are uh, commercial paper and bonds um, of um, commercial companies in the United States. So even though they've been talking about tapering and reducing the amount of um, assets that on the balance sheet of the federal government, they've actually kept buying and now in mid-February or we're about to hit nine trillion. So both the money supply acceleration uh, is ongoing and uh, printing money to purchase assets uh, is still ongoing. So n none of the tapering or reduction uh, in the money supply is actually happening as promised. So now about the coming inflation, uh, this is the uh, grain production and uh, countries that produce grain. So Russia and Ukraine account for about a, a quarter um, of all grain produced. So if that supply is affected by the current events, then the price of all grains, wheat, uh, basically, what most people in the world consume, you know, carbs, um, 
will go will the price will go up, the availability will go down, and that will cause higher inflation numbers. And the same for oil and gas. So here, uh, on the left hand side, you have oil production. On the right hand side, you have gas production. Uh, so Russia is uh, number three uh, by oil production and number two uh, natural natural gas production. They're actually they're very close with Saudi Arabia. Sometimes Russia goes in the second place. Uh, depending on where you get your source and and how uh, at, at which point in time, but um, needless to say, uh, sanctions will cause higher gas, uh, oil, and, and natural gas prices, and people will be paying more. So United States right now um, gets about 21% of oil from Russia, uh, and um, even though I'm not going to get political, but uh, during Trump years, United States actually became a, a net exporter, and now we're again a net importer, and 20% comes from Russia. So the war will definitely affect gasoline prices if it hasn't already, but the prices are will be on the way up, I think. Uh, next, so this came out, and this is a share of U.S. zombie firms, and what does that mean is companies that receive money from the U.S. government uh, and the percentage of those companies that uh, have operating expenses that's higher uh, than the interest on their debt. So, uh, and they're called zombie companies because without the assistance of the federal government, they can't um, operate. So we'll see how that goes, but clearly um, it can't continue forever. And this is, uh, if you own stock, you, you, you may have been crying over your stock portfolio recently. Uh, this is the uh, chart of real earnings uh, and dividend yield versus inflation. So uh, in inflation adjusted terms, you're, uh, you're now actually losing money if you have it in the stock market uh, based on the current price action um, since the beginning of the year. Uh, and this is um, GDP growth and um, uh, nominal growth in GDP. So we're, uh, at the end of February, we passed uh, zero and we were actually, the GDP was uh, deflating for, um, for February. So the gross domestic product is hovering around zero right now. So there is no economic growth. So these are kind of the numbers um, that we have on where the, the economy stands right now and, and how things are going. Um, overall, the the stock market is not doing so well. The growth uh, in the economy is not doing so well and inflation continues. So hopefully um, inflation can, can get, can become more normal um, later this year with improvements in the supply chain, but we'll see where we end up with the, with the war in Ukraine and, and the sanctions and all that. So this is uh, an updated stock to flow model uh, from Plan B. Uh, he updates this every month and I and I typically show it in the in the delegators call. So um, he posted this on Twitter and stock to flow is a model that uh, Plan B developed. His sendo is 100 trillion. USD, you can follow him on um, Twitter if you have it. Uh, if you have Twitter, this is his handle at 100 trillion USD. So this is a model of um, price of Bitcoin versus the incoming supply. Uh, so as of now, we we know that 90% of all Bitcoins that will ever exist have been uh, minted. Uh, and the last Bitcoin will, will be minted in year uh, 2040. The last whole Bitcoin will be minted in the, in the year 2102. So we're 90% there. And this chart shows uh, how far uh, we are away from uh, the next halving uh, in months. So in the red, uh, we're at about 45 or 50 uh, months until next halving. And when, with the blue, as it becomes uh, 
uh, yellow, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Blue is we're at the halving. So if you see here in 2020 was the last halving and the previous halving uh, before that uh, was in uh, uh, 2016. So the halving event is when um, the block reward for minting a, a Bitcoin is cut in half and the number of Bitcoin that joins uh, or enters circulation is cut in half. What is next halving? Uh -huh. Okay, cool. And a question here, what is next halving? So um, today, uh, 900 Bitcoin are added to the circulating supply every day. Uh, before uh, 2020, May of 2020, uh, it was 1800. Uh, two years from now, in 2024, it's going to be cut down to 450. So uh, as time goes by, the reward gets cut in half every every four years. So the number of Bitcoin that enter circulation is cut in half. And this is something that's built into the Bitcoin uh, blockchain protocol to counter what's called uh, Metcalf's law, uh, where um, there's a, a network effect and uh, an effect of um, adoption, but also at the same time uh, it, with the Moore's law, uh, the processing power goes up every, it doubles every two years for uh, computer components. So uh, to counter uh, the increase in processing power in mining uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin has this halving built in. So uh, this jumps here with the white um, line going up. This is the price uh, anticipation. So he was anticipating that Bitcoin would hit a uh, hundred thousand some uh, sometime in the year uh, 2020, and we actually came to the highest was I think 68,000 around there in December of 2021. So we're kind of below uh, his uh, his model, but his model anticipates uh, a one. So this is a logarithmic chart. So his model anticipates. Uh, 1 million USD per Bitcoin by year 2025. Uh, we'll get to Ethereum burning. I have an Ethereum supply chart coming. So somebody asked about Ethereum burning uh, and I'll get to that later. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I have a couple more slides uh, about uh, Bitcoin. So uh, this is a um, reflection of the holder supply. The uh, green line is long-term holders. And the pink line is short-term holders. Uh, so short-term holders are those that are holding uh, Bitcoin in their wallet for less than uh, six months. And green is those who have been, been holding for more than six months. So um, as Bitcoin ages, because it's a blockchain, it's an open software, we know we can look at every wallet and we don't know who it belongs to, but we can tell how long that Bitcoin was in that wallet um, that's sitting there right now. So we know that uh, the short-term um, supply uh, is falling because it's after six months goes by, since the person put it in the wallet, it's no longer short-term. And the long-term supply indicates that people have been holding in large masses Bitcoin for a longer period of time. And normally, if you see here in, the, in, the, in, in this charts, when the price, price goes up, then the longer um, long term holders indicator goes down because some people s sell as price uh, is going up. And we see here uh, kind of we've we may have hit the bottom here with the short term supply here now, same as it was in 2019 is what I'm trying to say. If you look at like long term supply, the long term supply goes up right before there is a there is a bit bitcoin pump so based on this indicator we, we may have hit you know bottom with the current prices when uh bitcoin hit like 34 35000 uh, 3 weeks ago 2 or 3 weeks ago so we'll see but that's what currently the the charts tell us the the on chain metrics tell us and this um 
somebody asked me today uh, if uh, actually two people asked me if if they can buy Bitcoin in Russia and I was looking into it and I put this um, chart in. This is a price of Bitcoin in rubles. So ruble was uh, it was uh, uh, 70 rubles per dollar a few weeks back. Yes, it's it's close to 5 million rubles for one Bitcoin right now. That is correct. Yes. Um, so it, it ain't cheap and uh, it, it it approached 5 million when uh, Bitcoin was at like 55, 60,000 uh, in um, in end of 2021. So in December, but now, you know, if you find an arbitrage opportunity between ruble, dollar and Bitcoin, you can make some money. But I don't have access to that market. But yes, it's 5 million million um, rubles for Bitcoin. So if you are in Russia and you own one Bitcoin, you're already a, a, a Bitcoin millionaire. Um, so this is from... Uh, rational root and uh he is um you can find him at rational root uh on twitter so he puts together uh, on-chain analysis for uh, kind of where where the bitcoin cycle is and uh, he posted something that um he thought that the 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 there's a head and shoulders pattern uh on the current price action for bitcoin and we're in the um, on the right side of the shoulder, and where this this pattern is similar to what we saw in 2020. Um, so he thought that the the highest hype, uh, based on what we know now, was in May, in May of uh, 2021, um, and it was similar to what we saw in uh, January of 2018. So if that's true, then we're kind of going through a mild uh, crypto winter right now, or I would say crypto fall. Um, the prices, uh, I don't anticipate the prices to go much lower than from where they are right now. I don't, but uh, based on uh, on-chain metrics and um, price action, we, Bitcoin hit kind of the prices that it hit before the the, the big pump here uh in uh 2021 so if you go back to like fall of tw of 2020 it, it resembles kind of where we are right now price wise um and this is um adoption uh, of bitcoin versus price so um we are right now at about 1.3 uh, sorry um, what about 300 million users uh, or wallets with Bitcoins that have balances and uh, the price is around 42,000. And if you go back, it's kind of like a linear uh, growth. So when we hit 1 billion users, we're going to be at about 200,000, 250,000 um, dollars per, per Bitcoin. So, that, so, so that's where we're going. When does that happen? Um, we'll probably hit a billion by Yes, go ahead, Mr. P, with your questions. We'll probably hit a billion users within the next three or four years, I think. I'm drinking um, Lagunitas IPA. Indian Pale Ale. Okay, I don't know who Mr. P is, but but thank you for missing me. All right, so someone asked about uh, Ethereum burning rates. So this is um, Bitcoin supply and Ethereum supply. So Ethereum um, was an inflationary asset until there was... Um, Ethereum improvement proposal and uh, Ethereum was uh, fees um, started to account for burning some some ether. So every time a transaction happens 
uh, or transaction is executed, some Ethereum is burned. So Ethereum burning is something that's built into the protocol right now where um, uh, every time a transaction is executed, a portion of it is burned. Uh, and Okay. Um, so that's to, that's to answer what Ethereum um, burning is, the, the question that came in. So as far as for, for, for the Bitcoin supply, the next cut on the Bitcoin supply is going to be here. Um, and this is next halving at, at 2024. One moment, I'm reading a question that somebody sent in. Yes. So with with ETH, there is some there is a burning of ETH every time there is a transaction. With BTC, there is a halving that happens every four years. And here's their schedule. The uh, the previous halvings happened in 2020, 2016, uh, and the first one was in 2012. So next one is in 2024, and typically um, about, so these are different colors, are different uh, um, phases of the, uh, of the market. So uh, when it's red, it's um, in the bubble territory, it's high. And when it's in, it's in blue, it's, it's like a fire sale. So we hit this blue when we were approaching um, the halving in 2020, but that was most likely due to the um, the COVID crash that happened in the stock market that also caused the, um, the stocks to go down. But you can also see in, in 2018, 2019, during the crypto uh, winter, the price also uh, went down significantly and was, was in this blue area uh, in the buy accumulation area. So right now we're here somewhere in the in the cheap. So based on on these metrics of uh, halving and the relative price right now is a cheap time to buy. So we, we would go down to uh, a fire sale. Um, I don't know. Well, hopefully it doesn't, but it, it depends how, how bad I think things will get um, geopolitically in the coming weeks and months. Uh, and this is the, um, uh, the scale of the Bitcoin circulation. So we're kind of we hit a flat uh, flattening of the curve, as as Mr. Fauci would call it, flatten. Is it 30 days to flatten the curve? So we've flattened the curve of uh, Bitcoin production, uh, and we've mined 18.92 uh, million Bitcoin right now. So right now we have 10% uh, left. So approximately, um, uh, it's less than than two million Bitcoin that's that's left to, to get to left to mine within the next uh, 120 years. So we're also, uh, there are also new users who are coming into the blockchain space all the time and people are buying Bitcoin. So as those new users are entering the space and they're buying, they're buying it from long-term holders and those who are selling while the supply uh, doesn't change. The supply right now is, is close to constant. And in two more years, the next halving happens and the number of Bitcoins entering the circulation will be cut in half again. So we'll have, instead of 900 Bitcoin um, adding per day, we'll have um, 450. So next, uh, Cardano. Uh, Cardano, uh, what is it? It's a delegated proof of stake blockchain and uh, the holders of ADA native currency have a right to earn rewards by delegating their ADA to a stake pool. Uh, these rewards are minted as additional supply of ADA and um, added to the circulation every five days. So if you own ADA, you're entitled to uh, staking your ADA and earning rewards. If you own ADA and you don't stake it, then someone else is receiving your rewards because uh, the incoming supply of every epoch that happens every five days is 
distributed among those who are staking their ADA. So if you own ADA and you don't stake, then the rewards go to somebody else. And I have some, uh, for those who I knew the most common um, staking terms that you should know. One second, I'm going to, there are some questions that are coming in. I'm just gonna go over what the questions are. Okay, I got your question by email. I will go over it at the towards the end. Um, so uh, ADA staking rewards is a newly minted supply of Cardano uh, that's created when the stake pool operators operate the, the servers that process transactions and the staking rewards are distributed among uh, delegators. Delegators assign their authority to mint ADA on their behalf uh, from the newly created supply uh, to the stake pool operator. So you as delegator, you own ADA, you delegate it to a stake pool, the stake pool processes transactions, uh, participates in the slaughtery and mints blocks. Um, the ADA reserves are where those ADA rewards come from. Uh, ADA reserves are coins that have not yet been minted uh, or have not yet entered circulation. Uh, stake pool is a transaction validator who runs servers that process transactions on the blockchain. Um, and the stake pool is, is the validator itself. So stake pool is a collector of operator, delegator, um, and um, the transactions that are be being processed by, by the stake pool. Uh, Epoch is a period of computing time on Cardano, which is uh, five days. And uh, with Cardano, uh, the reduction in rewards happens every five days. So with Bitcoin, it's every four years when you have the halving and the mining rewards get cut in half. With uh, Cardano, it's every five days. So rewards get cut a little, little by little every five days. Uh, slottery is the random assignment of slots um, that are rewarded or given to the staple operator and uh, if they are chosen as a slot leader then they mint the block and once the block is minted then then it's then they own the block and they get reward for that block at the end of the epoch uh, the block is a batch of transactions uh, in the ledger book uh, with a certain number of transactions in them so any questions uh, on these Okay. Um, I found this and I wanted to share it. So this is uh, top 15 altcoins by uh, social volume. And uh, I get this uh, tidbits from crypto differ. They're kind of like the uh, on-chain metrics for different blockchains. And uh, I present something from them uh, every time that we meet. So this time they made um, social social volume and which blockchains have been mentioned the most uh, so ETH taken number one place. Uh, Bitcoin hasn't done uh, that well. Uh, number two, surprising Tezos and Cardano uh, is after Dogecoin. Shibu is here somewhere in the sixth place, uh, which is not so bad. But I would expect more uh, talk about um, Cardano. But I think that um, you know the 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 shit coins, the do the Doge coins, they they get a lot of the social volume. Um, a lot of references on social media and so forth because people talk about how so-and-so became a millionaire by owning a trillion doggy coins. Um, Cardano uh, long-term holder. So um, recently you know, the crypto market has had a lot of volatility and Many altcoins uh, prices have been going down, um, including ETH and Cardano. 
but um, based on on-chain metrics, uh, long-term holders who have had their ADA for uh, over one year uh, have increased and uh, they've been buying and holding. So uh, the long-term holders have increased their uh, stake by about um, 4 billion ADA. So it means that short-term holders have been selling to long-term holders. And recently, when the war started uh, in Ukraine uh, seven days ago, this happened. The price was hovering around a dollar. It dipped here to uh, about 80 cents, and the volume just went up like this, like a candle at around 80 cents. So um, this is called uh, buying when there is uh, blood is on the street, literally. Uh, when blood is on the street and there's a lot of bad news, people sell, but others, especially long-term holders, they buy because they have money waiting on the sidelines and they wait for those moments to buy. Shit coins never ceases to cause me to laugh or at least smile. Yeah, me too. And and there are new ones, you know, there there, there are some new ones that are happening all the time. Uh, I, I got to... I want to find something. So uh, for those who are new or those that haven't been paying attention to this, pull something up real quick. So like uh, if you go to coin market cap, this is um, one of the sites that lists uh, the market cap and prices. And you look at like the, the biggest gainers uh, here, there is always some reference to like some dog dog shit coin or some uh, dog coin. Um, and I'm not saying that all those products uh, projects are bad, but look at this. Star Wars cat went up 1300% within the past day. Robot ship 485% within the last day. And if you click on more, it will give you a listing. Last 24 hours. Star Wars cat went up by 4,447%. And then, but you also have the top losers on the right hand side here. Toddy Dog went down by 48%. Catcoin went down by 37%. So the moral of this is. If you want to gamble and you have some um, wrapped BNB or uh, sushi swap or some swap coin, then you're more than welcome to um, put everything on red or black and roll in this casino and try to make uh, millions out of it. Let's make our own coin. I mean, you're, you're welcome to make your own coin. You can actually make your own coin on Cardano uh, with native assets. But I don't really want to get involved with that because I have a, I'm, I'm expanded as it is, but you're welcome to. All right. If you can find video cards, yeah. Uh, so, Kind of where where have we been with um, Cardano price? So we've um, this is what happened in the past two years. Um, staking and rewards we went up from about uh, ten cents to um, about eighty cents here in January when uh, Allegra uh, the token walking was added and native assets about a dollar uh, in uh, March of 2021. Cardano and Ethiopia announced it about a dollar forty, and um, in May of 2021, uh, China bans BTC. This was in May of 2021, and then we had this protracted kind of mini bear market here, uh, where Cardano fell to about a dollar, and then uh, smart contracts released in September, uh, price hits three bucks, and then we've kind of came down and hit some. Um, 
you know, a dollar, dollar twenty. So right now we're hovering about ninety cents, which I think is is cheap. And um, nothing scares people more than um, uh, how do I say it? Despots with the red button. You know, somebody who screams, "Put the missiles in red alert!" That would definitely scare investors. So I'm hoping that. Um, the situation, I, I feel really bad uh, for both sides. Uh, I don't like seeing buildings blown up with missiles. And I also don't like young kids in um, you know, from Russia, from some village that have no money and they go uh, to the military to serve and they risk their lives for cheap money and then they get burned in tanks. And I don't want to see that either. And I also don't want to see, you know, People suffering on either side. So I hope that the conflict gets resolved and the, all the markets can move on. Not for the pur purpose of greed or making money, but I just don't want to see anybody else suffer. It's time to put an end to it. So uh, our next section for the day is economics. Uh, Cardano blockchain economics. Uh, the circulating supply of uh, ADA is uh, 33 and a half uh, billion ADA right now. Uh, the total uh, amount of ADA that will ever exist uh, is 45 billion, and that's also the maximum supply. Uh, reserves right now, which is uh, ADA that hasn't yet entered circulation, is 11.4 billion, and 23.6 uh, billion is staked, which means that uh, about 69% right now of ADA is staked. Uh, the rewards per uh, five-day epoch is uh, 10.3 uh, million, but this this number is going down all the time. So every five days, the amount of rewards that are paid out uh, goes down, uh, and eventually it's gonna. I have some um, infographics for that, but it's gonna go down to zero over the next 100 years. Uh, so Cardano has inflation built in. And the current inflation is uh, less than 2%. And inflation is how much is uh, being added to, to, to circulation. So any questions on this, on the uh, supply, rewards, maximum amounts? Uh, I, hear, I, I hear and see people on Twitter all the time saying that Cardano has no maximum um, supply, which is total bullshit. Um, so this was uh, this came out from uh, sentiment, uh, and they analyzed on-chain analytics and uh, behavior of different blockchains, um, and they found that in in uh, uh, throughout January, the the largest holders of ADA um, in a, in a period of ten days when prices were going down, they've added um, about fifty million of ADA. So the largest wallets keep buying. And this is something I see all the time. Uh, people complain that, oh, the rich are getting richer and proof of stake means you um, you make rewards if you already rich and you already have coins. And then I see this and it, and, and it re, re emphasizes that, re emphasizes that uh, you know, people complain that the rich are getting richer but they don't want to accumulate, and the, those who hold they accumulate, and they and this is how they become richer. They buy from the weak hands that are selling. So anytime you hear somebody complaining that the rich are getting richer, ask them if they have been buying assets when when prices were going down or where they're shaking in their boots. Um, next, what's being built on Cardano? So. Uh, about a third right now, uh, a third of the development effort is NFT collections uh, and a third everything else. 3% uh, metaverse projects, uh, NFT marketplaces, development tools, wallets, gaming and DEX. Uh, so we have um, several new DEXs that are being built. So right now uh, on Cardano, on the mainnet, we have Sunday Swap, Muesli Swap, ADEX, uh, on the test net, which means that they are uh, in development and they're being tested. Uh, Wing Riders, uh, Ergo, and MinSwap. 
Uh, we also have three more coming, Milky Swap, Alchemax, and Meta Deck. So we have about like four uh, DEXs, decentralized exchanges um, that are active now. And uh, there are eight more coming. So what are those DEXs? What are decentralized exchanges? Uh, they're exchanges uh, similar to um, like uh, the Binance Smart Chain, where you can exchange uh, the Rob Rob Binance or um, other coins for new projects. It's basically a, an investment segue that's decentralized, um, and those are those are active on, on Cardano now and there are more coming. Uh, so since Cardano supports native assets, which is other currencies, uh, it will support exchanging other currencies for, for ADA and um, between each other. So that it, it's like an economy of its own. Zuck bucks, I like, I like that. Uh, so somebody asked me to add the slide today, and I've gone this o gone over this before. But uh, where do ADA rewards come from? So 75% uh, of ADA rewards, and and where do you get ADA rewards? So you get them in your wallet. So if you have ADA and you stake ADA, then if the pool made blocks uh, when you were staking your ADA, then the reward for that block gets distributed among the delegators based on how much ADA they have staked and how many blocks have been minted. And uh, those rewards go back to your wallet and they come, 75% comes from reserves, 25% comes from transaction fees. Uh, and that makes up a reward. And then when the reward is distributed, 75% goes to stake pool and delegators 25% goes to the treasury and the treasury is uh, the funding for uh, the development uh, funds, the catalyst development funds on Cardano. So there is a treasury that funds projects uh, every two months. I think it's every two months. Uh, so you, you can apply if you have a project when you, you want to develop on uh, Cardano, you can apply for your project to be funded by the treasury. So this is where 25% goes. So as time goes by, uh, rewards get paid out every epoch, every five days, the rewards shrink. And as rewards shrink, you receive less and less ADA uh, in your rewards, but so, so does everybody else. So the current inflation is just below 2%. That means that the circulating supply uh, of ADA uh, grows uh, less than 2% per year. So if you're staking and you're making more than 2%, then you're beating inflation on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, and right now we're at about 75%. Um, circulating supply has already been minted. So what's going to happen within the next few years? Um, in 2021, 3.3 billion uh, in rewards have been paid out this year. 2.1 billion and, and um, about 800 million of that will be minted between January and May. So in May, you're going to see a sharp, a sharp decline because we're going to reach a tipping point, a sharp decline, decline in rewards. So uh, if you own ADA and you're not staking it, you should be staking it now until we, we, we reach that May tipping point. Um, Next year, it's going to be cut to 1.7 billion, and then 2024, 1.3 billion. So, because there is a reduction in payouts and rewards every five days, there is a gradual reduction in rewards that are paid out to, to delegators. So that that's how the rewards uh, shrink, and so do the uh, the reserves. So. The, re the rewards is what gets paid out. The reserves is what's kept in the um, in the reserve supply. So right now, 12 billion is in is in the reserves. Or I'm sorry, right now 10.9 billion in the reserves. In 2021, it was is 12 billion. So right now, we're we're 
uh, at 10.9 uh, by uh, May of next year, the reserves are going to go down to 8.8 .8 billion. So as rewards are getting paid out, the the reserves are getting depleted, and you can see that the reserves will be less than 1 billion ADA by year 2033, which is only 11 years from now. Um, so as more wallets and users are being added to the Cardano blockchain, uh, the reserve is shrinking and the rewards are shrinking. The value will, will reflect that. So any questions on this, on reserves or rewards, uh, or if you're completely confused of what this of what this means, please speak up or put something in the chat. Okay. So how do you actually uh, acquire aid and how do you stake it? So this is the five steps that you need to take to acquire and stake ADA and start receiving rewards. So you need to have or open an account on Binance, Bittrex, Coinbase, or any exchange that lists ADA. How do you find an exchange that lists ADA? You can go to CoinMarketCap. CoinMarketCap.com. Scroll down to Cardano, right over here, and click on it. And then click on Markets. And then this will show you the exchange where you can buy it and the pair. So the pair here you can see A the USDT, A the USD. So Coinbase has A the USD. These are sorted by volume, but you can kind of look for your exchange to see if it's listed. Uh, so some of the largest ones are Binance, Coinbase, KuCoin, Kraken, and so forth. So look for a pair that that works for you. Uh, and that's how you find an exchange to buy. Um, next step is, uh, you know, so you, you open an account, you purchase ADA. Uh, there may be a holding period when you have to uh, keep that ADA in your wallet. And then you download and install uh, a compatible wallet. So there is a Daedalus, which is a full node version for Mac, PC, um, or or Linux, uh, which is slower, but it's a full uh, uh, node, but also a full wallet experience. There's also a Uroi, which is the mobile wallet that you can download for Android or uh, iPhone. Uh, there is no mobile version of Daedalus. So the mobile version is Uroi, and Daedalus is full node version only. So then you install the wallet, you send ADA from the exchange to your um, receive address in your wallet, that's step three. And once you have received your ADA in your uh, Daedalus or Euro wallet, then you can delegate your stake. And you delegate your stake, there's a delegation section. Um, you go to the delegation section in your wallet, you search for a pool by its ticker name, and then you um, can track your rewards and I can show you and I will show you how to do that. So you will then uh, after you um, you have delegated, it will take uh, four cycles, uh, four epochs uh, or approximately 20 days for you to start receiving rewards. So um, you stake, you delegate your stake in epoch M plus one. So depending on where the epoch is, it could be one or four days that you have to wait for uh, the next snapshot of the ADA in your wallets to be to be taken. So when the snapshot is taken um, in the next epoch M plus two in the next within the next five days, um, hopefully the, the pool produces blocks, and then your um, amount of ADA in the wallet is taken into account when the blocks are minted, and then in M plus three the next epoch the rewards are calculated, and in N plus four, uh, epoch number four, the rewards uh, are sent to your wallet. 
So that's why it takes 20 days. So from the time that you uh, delegate your stake to uh, you starting to receive rewards takes appro approximately 20 days. So any questions on that? Okay. Uh, this is an um, Cardano versus Ethereum uh, volume and fees. So Cardano is a competitor of Ethereum, the founder of Cardano, uh, Charles Hoskinson. He was um, briefly, as he says, the CEO of Ethereum uh, in uh, 2015 uh, for about six months. Uh, and then he went off to do his own thing and started Cardano. So Cardano is a competitor of Ethereum or Ethereum killer, as sometimes they call it. Um, the volume on Cardano is now higher. Uh, the volume of transaction in um, US dollar terms or the value of transactions. Uh, so Cardano has surpassed Ethereum, but the fees are 568 times cheaper than than Ethereum. So uh, the fees were 76,000 versus 38 million fees based uh, fees paid on Ethereum. So this is one of the advantages um, of Cardano is that the transactions are cheaper and Cardano is, is already proof of stake and Ethereum is trying to become proof of stake and hasn't yet. Um, so monthly on-chain stats for February for Cardano, um, wallets have increased by 4.3%. So right now there are um, 3.12 million uh, wallets, delegated wallets 1.14 million, Delegate means that those are wallets that are delegating their stake. Uh, stake ADA has gone down by about 2%. It was at 70%, now it's at 68. Uh, stake pools, uh, 3,100 stake pools. Uh, transactions are up, native tokens are up. And uh, Pluto scripts, which are smart contracts, smart contracts have increased by 40%. So that's good. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. and. What are the transactions that uh, are running uh, lately on Cardano? So uh, with metadata, that means that these are complex transactions, not just trades. And interaction with Pluto scripts, 45% are uh, transactions that facilitate smart contracts. So right now, almost half of the uh, transactions on the Cardano blockchain in February have been uh, smart contracts transactions. And I, I envision that that number will go up. And the simple transactions are basically just sending back and forth or buy and sell on an exchange that's gone down to uh, 23%. And um, about six months ago, that was mo mostly 93%, most of the transactions on the blockchain. So now we are in um, the Basha era and uh, the current development, there have been some improvements uh, in the in the block size uh, and uh, the, the transaction uh, addressing. Uh, with the latest update that we installed, uh, the first release of Hydra, which is the scaling solution for Cardano, is scheduled for some time in June or July of 2022. So this is the this is where we are right now. And um, some additional stats, uh, wallets per day, uh, like I was saying, we're around 3,000 new wallets right now. We hit uh, 3 million wallets. Uh, and uh, 75 uh, million uh, US dollars worth of ADA is locked in smart contracts right now. And th there was a huge jump in January uh, because there were some new features that were added uh, to Pluto scripts with the latest release. So we're uh, monitoring this number. Um, hopefully in the next time we meet in April, uh, we see this number increase um, because this means that um, if there's locked value in smart contracts, it means that it's ADA that's locked in smart contracts. So it's it's off the market and it's it's used either as collateral 
or escrow or um, some type of contract condition. So we want this number to to go up because as that number goes up, it means that uh, smart contracts are being used more and aid is being used as collateral more. So we want to see that that increase. And then this, um, I think it's it's very important to um, stress this. So in Epochs um, 230, so the difference is approximately 300 days. So Epoch 230 and Epoch uh, 315, uh, it's about 300 days difference. So the rewards, the current rewards uh, are around 10.7 million per Epoch and 300 days ago was 23 million. So the the ADA rewards have gone uh, have been cut by about 60 percent, 55 percent, and what that means is, uh, as time goes by, uh, every five days the amount of ADA that's added to circulation is reduced. So this will have effect on the price, and this will have effect on uh, what's available out there for sale for you to buy as time goes by. And what's available for new users that are entering the um, Cardano economy, they, as the incoming supply is cut, the rewards are cut, there's less aid that's being added to, to the supply. So, um, so delegated wallets and ADA wallets, we've covered that. Uh, ADA per delegated wallet. So this number keeps going down. Uh, last year, about a year ago, we were at 140,000 ADA average per wallet. Right now, we're down to 20,000 ADA average per wallet, and that includes the the big wallets that have you know millions, and the small wallets that have 20 ADA. Um, so the as as new comers enter the markets, they buy ADA from those who have been uh, holding for a while. The bigger wallets could be shrinking or some could be buying, but that average number is going down just by the sheer number of those who are um, entering uh, the ecosystem. Um, so our website that about Cardano staking and delegation, uh, you can uh, go there. There is some uh, for additional educational material. Um, Stakemyada.net. So this is our website. Uh, and if you go here, uh, a lot what I cover, we have um, like a, uh, how to delegate and how to stake. There is also a Q&A here. Uh, there's a glossary uh, about Cardano staking, staking Q&A. So some questions and answers that you can uh, you can find here that may be useful. There's some article and useful links. So if you go to useful links here, then you can find uh, our page, we have a, a page on LinkedIn, uh, follow us, uh, YouTube channel, uh, and we have a stats page on adapools.org, uh, pool2.io, and pool.pm, which is like the real-time uh, tracking. But if you go to um, uh, adapools.org, you can uh, get some of, uh, some of the pool stats, and I'll go over some now. So uh, this is our ticker, LEGA, uh, ROA M. This is the um, return on ADA within the past 30 days. So we've um, we've paid out a return of 4.884% annualized in ADA. Lifetime, 3.62%. Uh, this is over the life of the pool, what has been paid out uh, in annualized return. Um, Again, the uh, ADA inflation rate right now is less than 2%. So if you're staking with a pool that makes more than 2%, then you're beating inflation. So that's a good thing. Uh, that's something to, to look for. Um, live stake is uh, ADA that's delegated to the pool, but is not participating in the current um, epoch. So it could be somebody that has added or removed uh, ADA from the pool, added delegation, removed delegation, 
so it's not participating in the staking uh, epoch. Active stake is what is participating. Uh, pledge is what our pool promises to keep in the pledge wallet. So there is something called the pledge wallet uh, where we have to keep a certain amount of ADA uh, in the pool to keep the pool running. So that's our pledge. Uh, and uh, what do you pay for staking and what does the pool get out of it? So um, the margin or the fee is 2%. So for every 100 ADA that you make from staking, the pool receives 2%. And then there is a fixed cost for every epoch of 348 ADA, which helps us um, pay for the servers, the equipment and maintenance and all that. And that's 348 ADA per, uh, per epoch. Uh, if we don't make any blocks, then we pay that and you don't pay anything because that's a fixed cost. Um, estimated blocks in epoch is how much on average we'll make per epoch. Uh, block trend is uh, the current number of blocks. In this epoch, seven is uh, delegators. How many delegators we have, um, and then you have some more social icons here. Uh, so, to look at you know, how many blocks have we made uh, in the previous, um, so you have the epoch number, and then how many blocks. I don't really like this interface uh, in Ada pools. I like this one here in um, uh, pool tool that I O. But you can, I mean. They present the same information, but this one has a, like a, a nicer table, um, which will show epoch the number of blocks. So the number of blocks produced, that's uh, like a, there's a, this lottery. So it's a lottery and it's completely random. Every time you flip a coin, you get a 50% 50, 50 chance. So uh, in the current epoch, we have one. In the one before, we have one. And then in three, two, two, we made eight, one, seven, four, one, ten, three, one, and so forth. So the way that proof of stake works is you have to be staking for a long period of time to average out because um, the, the protocol um, penalizes those who try to run from one pool to another pool because they think that somebody made more blocks in a certain epoch. It doesn't work like that. In order for you to average out your reward, you have to be staking for a longer period of time. Uh, because we're going to, you know, last epoch we had one, but the one before we had eight, and then we had one and seven. So if you if you um, average that out, that's how you get this number right here, 4.2 uh, blocks per epoch. And then uh, if you also average out uh, the rewards, you can see here delegated rewards, um, You know, 297, but one before that was 4.7, so 4,700, and then 300 and 4,100. So that's how that works. Is to average out, you have to stake for a long period of time. The the, the blockchain encar encourages long-term uh, staking, so that people are not jumping between pools, or they're not just trying to, you know, um, de delegate to some pool for a short period of time because they think that that pool is making large number of blocks. So uh, any questions on this? Don't be afraid. Okay, tough crowd today, not many questions. Um, how much money can you expect to earn by staking or how much ADA can you expect to earn by staking? So. We can um, look at some delegators. We can find kind of an, an average delegator. Um, you can sort them. So I don't know. The, the pool does, never knows who the delegators are or who has how much stake. So we can't know who, who bel which address belongs to who. But let's say I'm going to look somebody who's been around for a while. So this person was here since uh, April and they have 30,000 ADA. So they made 31 ADA uh, last payout, uh, 322, and then 2 ADA, 27 ADA, 15, 2, 43, 11. So these are the payouts in ADA that happen every five days. Uh, and these, these rewards get sent back to their wallet. So if, you, if you're thinking about buying ADA or purchasing ADA and staking it, 
and you want to find out how much you could earn, then you can go here and pick any amount that you're thinking about investing and you can think about um, how much you, you will earn. So this person has 11,000. So they get on average about 11, one, 10, five. So maybe six or eight, eight per epoch. But um, if they receive eight in rewards and they keep it in their wallet, then the additional eight that they receive will enable them to receive higher rewards going forward because they'll be receiving rewards on a higher uh, amount of ADA. And also as time goes by, uh, there will never be more than 45 billion um, ADA. And the reason why I uh, was uh, um, showing the inflation and quantitative easing slides in the beginning is because inflation will keep going up and the government will print more money and there will, there will always be more dollars but there will never be more bitcoin or ada so the price in terms of ada in bitcoin in us dollar price will go up um there's no question about it there there is um volatility in this market but overall if you if you look at um price of bitcoin over the past I'm going to try to try to go back to that slide over the past um ten years or twelve years you no know, uh in two thousand eleven bitcoin was at one dollar right here, and that's only eleven years ago, so a day is at one dollar today. So uh, that that's pretty much it. I fit in in just over an hour. Uh, I have we have some additional. There are some useful links. Uh, there is a, you can also find this link on our website. There's a st stake pool um, staking calculator. Let me just show you where you can find that. So if you go to stakemyada.net on our website, um, useful links about staking and then useful links. <laughs> There's a link here to calculator. You can uh, calculate how much you can earn. There is a Misari metric. So this is a calculator you can plug in um, how much if you delegate your stake amount and currency and reward per epoch. So with 10,000 ADA, it's six ADA in average per term, but you can play with this. Um, we have the Misari metrics uh, and some other useful links here. So uh, visit our website, stakemyada.net. And if you have uh, any questions, uh, feel free to email me. This is my email address, admin and stakemyada.net. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions you might have. Uh, anything else before um, we call it a night? Thank you everyone for, who joined today. Uh, please, uh, join our um, YouTube channel, youtube.com, it's uh, Lega Systems. So we, uh, I will be posting this video here uh, on my channel. Uh, please subscribe and uh, you can find some previous videos here from a previous delegators call. You're welcome. Uh, I'm here for you if you have any questions anytime. And thank you for everyone. Thank you to everyone who uh, joined this call tonight and um, have a good night.